the knee joint, a marvel of natural engineering, the strongest and most complex joint in the human body, enabling a range of movements and activities. But the knee can go wrong, causing pain and stiffness and restricting freedom of movement. To see why, we need to know a little about the anatomy of the knee. The knee joint connects the thigh and shin bones. A thin, smooth, cushioning cartilage, known as articular cartilage, covers the moving surfaces inside the joint. This serves as shock absorber and lubrication for the bones. However, it is subject to wear and tear. If the loads on the joint are too high, articular cartilage degenerates and is worn away, leaving the bones to rub against each other. This can cause inflammation, pain, swelling, stiffness, muscle weakness, and progressive loss of mobility. The condition is known as arthritis and affects a large percentage of people over 50. In most cases, wear and tear of the cushioning cartilage is related to the alignment of the leg. Bow legs or knock knees are added stress factors affecting wear and tear of the cushioning. In advanced arthritis, the articular cartilage has been completely worn away and the bones in the knee come into direct contact. This condition, known as osteoarthritis, is a severe inflammation of the joints accompanied by chronic pain. Another common type of arthritis that can affect the knees is rheumatoid arthritis. This is caused by dysfunction of the immune system. Abnormal antibodies are produced that get deposited in the lining tissue of the joints, causing chronic inflammation and slow destruction of cartilage. All such joints may be affected by rheumatoid arthritis and both sides of the body are affected equally. Whatever the type of arthritis, some cases can be successfully managed by conservative means such as medication, physiotherapy, weight control or modification of leisure or sporting activities that aggravate the problem. Others may require minor surgery to remove diseased tissue or loose fragments of bone or cartilage to slow down the damaging process or to structurally realign the joint to reduce abnormal stress. Total knee replacement surgery is considered only for those people with severely damaged joints that can no longer be successfully managed by other means. Total knee replacement is performed primarily to relieve pain, but also for greater strength and mobility, to improve stability, to improve alignment and correct deformity, to improve functional motions such as walking and driving. Total knee replacement, also known as total knee arthroplasty, is one of the most successful of all surgical procedures and a virtual medical miracle. Prior to the development of knee replacement technology, patients with advanced arthritis of the knee had to live with chronic pain and loss of functional independence. Knee replacement means that patients can live a pain-free and independent life. Knee replacement employs specially designed components made of high-strength, biocompatible metals and plastics to replace the bone ends and cartilage in the knee. The metal that is most commonly used for the bone prosthesis is an alloy of cobalt, chromium and molybdenum. The plastic cartilage component is ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene. These materials have been used in joint replacement for about 30 years and their behavior in the body is well known. The components are very precisely manufactured and the surfaces are congruent, smooth and highly polished by which delicate, low friction surfaces are restored to the knee. Knee replacement is a major surgical procedure that lasts about two hours. In modern knee replacement, only the worn-out cartilage surfaces of the joint are replaced. The operation is basically a resurfacing procedure. An incision is made in front of the knee. 
Specialized instruments are used to trim off the worn out surfaces and shape the ends of the bones. Alignment abnormalities can usually be corrected during the operation by adjusting the way the bones are cut. The components are then attached to the bone with a specialized polymer, commonly referred to as bone cement. Alternatively, a cement-free method of attachment may be preferred. Here, the components have a porous texture on their undersurface into which the bone can grow, similar to the healing of a fracture. The surgery involves a 10-day stay in the hospital and a three-month period of rehabilitation, after which the majority of patients show excellent results. There is significant relief of pain and return of good functional movement and strength, enabling them to walk normally, climb stairs, drive a car and cope with the activities of daily life.